Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bhartia, and welcome to our yearly series on predictions. Today, we have with us once again John Murtick, Executive Director of Open Mainframe Project. John, it's great to have you back on the show. Likewise, great to talk to you. I will, of course, ask you to grab your Open Mainframe crystal ball and share predictions with us. But before we go there, just quickly remind our viewers what is the Open Mainframe Project all about? The Open Mainframe Project is designed to be like a vendor neutral home for collaborating on open source um, technologies, building open source software. Uh, and, and just really bringing the industry together to um, help produce, you know, tooling and products and insights that can benefit the entire industry. And this is similar to a lot of other Linux Foundation initiatives that just focuses on this distributed collaboration. Our focus is how can we do that within the context of the mainframe ecosystem? Um, and so we put support a, a dozen projects, working groups, um, a bunch of different efforts, um, and have a really nice cross-section of the mainframe industry that participates. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and share with us your predictions for 2024. All right. Well, grabbing that crystal ball, and again, I'm, I'm always cognizant that I'm, I am I tend not to do a lot of predictions, but I'm going to do it for you here. Um, you know, the one trend that sort of hit us all by storm um, about this time actually last year was was AI, um, thanks to our dear friends at OpenAI that, um, you know, got ChatGPT out there and it really took the world by storm. And I think we have seen that pattern. We've seen just like in any other time where we've seen a new technology come out, it it grabs everyone's attention but then it also sort of leads us down all sorts of different paths. And I think we saw that with AI in 2023. Lots of exploration, lots of interesting ideas, lots of fear, lots of big concerns that have came with it. But what I'm seeing sort of under the hood start to happen, and, and I have a fortunate enough of seeing some other industries um, for what I work with here at the Linux Foundation, is we're seeing them start to think about it within the context of, how can it help them as an industry be more uh, effective, scale better, uh, you know, you know, really be able to, to tackle things that they weren't able to before? AI is not going to replace anything in the near term. It's not going to take us all over by robots in the near term. But, uh, you know, I heard a presentation earlier this year where they really talked about within the context of artistry. And it said, you know, think of AI as you know, a tool in your toolbox that helps you be more creative and helps you produce those results that you're looking for. So with that, I look at the mainframe world and there's tons of opportunities there. You know, there's, there's uh, a, a growing uh, you know, set of systems administrators and programmers out there that are sort of getting towards the end, tend to their, to, at the end of their career. And there's knowledge that's stuck in their heads of the uniqueness of this platform. How can that, how can AI be a tool that can potentially help as we bring that next generation of folks on board? Uh, how can it be helping as you know folks are going back and looking at legacy tools and legacy programs and basically helping do things more efficiently and maybe looking at opportunities to bring in new tooling for different areas there? So I, I think we're going to see, just like I think we're going to see in a lot of different industries and a lot of different you know, horizontals and verticals where AI is going to start to really chip away at the block of um, the possible, I think we're going to start to see that in the mainframe world. Uh, and, and we saw it a little bit with Watson X um, from IBM um, back in Q3. And I think we're going to start to see that here. And what I do believe we're going to see is that collaboration happening in open source. Because if you think about it, the biggest challenge with AI right now is the trust. And this is where I think open source can come in and, and is starting to come in of being that area where these models, these data sets can be hosted, it can be transparent, it can be open, it can be collaborative, uh, and it can really start to lower those barriers of trust of getting these technologies adopted. On top of AI, like I said, I think that's going to be one of the ones that we're going to really see push here. I, I think another thing that we're really going to start to see, and this is connects back to open source, is more and more companies um, within the mainframe world, and this is just as the same as we've seen in other industries, they're going to start to look at their stacks and they're going to say, what are our opportunities to collaborate? And what are our opportunities 
to bring folks together to build, um, you know, these commodity lower level pieces of the stack, which, you know, if you've been around cloud, this is something that happened a decade ago. You know, this has happened in tons of industries, tons of horizontal horizontals and verticals. And, and we've seen it here with with Zoe, frankly. I think we're going to see that sort of accelerate, um, you know, and mostly as we're sort of coming out of an area where, um, you know, economically there's some stagnation. We're seeing cost cutting happen all over the board. Uh, we are seeing sort of that, you know, retiring population happening on uh, the mainframe, you know, administrator side. There, there's going to be a push to be more efficient. And that push is going to mean of how can we collectively build these tools to help us get there, um, especially around not just legacy technologies, but also future facing technologies. So I, I think there's going to be a huge push there, especially as this ecosystem really starts to get their hands wrapped around how can open source truly help them? Like, I feel like they're they're still on that early stage of it. And I, I sense this year is going to start to be a breakthrough. So, yeah, my two big predictions, um, you know, not AI rule the world, but AI is going to make a dent. And we're going to see more flurries of, of things happening within open source um, on the mainframe side as these organizations, uh, vendors and customers are are really looking to become more efficient. Excellent. Thanks for sharing those two predictions. Now, can you also talk about what kind of challenges that you see are going to be there for open mainframe, mainframe, you know, ecosystem next year or opportunities that you see? So I think a combination opportunity and challenge is is going to be helping educate and get the decision makers within mainframe shops, um, but also within vendors to better understand how to leverage open source to help accelerate their businesses. You know, I, I've seen this happen in other industries already, so it's not like it's a, a thing that's that's not possible. But I see one area of, of really importance, and this is especially for our projects to take off, but also just open source in general, is that double down on the education, um, you know, getting past the fear aspects, helping understand, you know, the value to the business, helping understand, you know, the security um, aspects of it, and, and helping understand where their position of investing in open source gets them, you know, just like we see in, in other places. You know, what you get in, what you invest in, you get multipliers back out of. And that and that continues to scale over time. You know, you put, um, you know, a half a million dollars of, of effort into there. You know, you're getting, you know, 10, 20 million dollars back. You put a million, you know, that continues to grow and grow and grow. And that's and that's sort of the model that we've seen other industries start to understand and adopt. And, and this is why they continue to invest this is an area that's starting to take hold in some areas of mainframe, but to really help it grow, that's going to be where we need to be. So I would say that's going to be probably one I would say is it's going to be a challenge. It's not easy, but I think it's also a, an area for opportunity um, for sure. I, I think the other thing that we're sort of keeping an eye on is, you know, the, the continual where we're seeing on tech trends spending, um, you know, we're, We've seen a lot of um, you know tech organizations that are downsizing, you know, laying people off, right sizing. A lot of coming out of COVID. Um, a lot of it with just some of the you, um, you know the interest rates and things like that. Techno nationalism that's happening out there. I mean, it's definitely an uneasy environment. It's something that we're really keeping an eye out on. I, I never want to say open source is is recession proof, but it does have really interesting ways of being able to be an asset in recessions, you know, meaning as companies are looking to go look back at their, their portfolios, they can take a hard look and say, hey, you know, maybe these are pieces here. We don't need to be maintaining this all by ourselves. We can be out there, you know, collaborating with companies and building this up. I mean, if you think about some of the some of the major tech companies of our time, they were born out of the times of recessions. That's and and so you see those seeds that are early planted on at these stages are the ones that when things really take off, um, these companies are well positioned. So it's something we're thinking about. It's something we're keeping an eye on. Um, it's, it's you know, all the, obviously these things um, are not unique to mainframe. I think it's a cross tech is a piece in there. Um, but I think that's one in there. And then I think probably third is going to be on the security front. We're 
we're really we know that you know the applications that run on mainframes have the utmost highest security requirements i think one of the things that's on us as a project is how can we best position our projects to be able to be proactive in a security front i mean you're never going to make anything 100% secure. It's it's just a security vulnerability waiting to happen. I mean, I've been saying that for, for years and years and years. But to me, the most important part is how are the processes and structures you have so that way you're able to react to those appropriately and be proactive in many cases. So I, I see that for the project as, and I see that just for open source in general, I don't think it's very unique to us, as a an opportunity for investment but I also see it as a challenge of there's work to be done. And, you know, Zoe's taking a huge emphasis on security. Um, they have been for the last year. And, it, and and I think there can be a lot looked at as an example. Um, that's stuff that I think we're going to need to see penetrated into many other of our projects and, and other areas in open source and in the mainframe world to really start to take off. And and the good thing is, is there's work that's happening in the open um, open SSF that I think is all things that we can pull from and learn from and derive. But that's really, I think, where um, a lot we're going. Um, and, and, I, and I think another thing that we're really hoping, and this I think kind of ties a lot of these pieces together, is helping some of these mainframe um, vendors along with customers get a stronger open source um, you know, program that they're going in with we see really strong, it's actually interesting, the financial services industry, which is one of the stronger industries for mainframe, has a lot of deep investments and and you know they're they're doing a ton in building open source program offices. I'd say they're probably outside of the tech sector, they're some of the strongest for open source program offices um, that are out there. Um, you know, City, JP Morgan Chase, Fidelity, uh, a number of others are really, really building that out strong. We need to also help in the mainframe vendor area. Um, well, I guess twofold. One is we need to help make sure that we can connect the mainframe efforts back into that because it's a great way to help sort of unify that story. But then secondarily, and well, probably not even secondarily, I would say probably equally as important is helping the mainframe vendors recognize the value that open source can provide on their product lines and you know, helping them get to market even faster. And, you know, I, I think we, again, that's a challenge out there. I think there's some vendors that are doing a really, really, really good job of that. IBM has been for decades. Uh, I see Broadcom has a really strong open source, um, you know, program office and, and way that they're approaching things, at least on the mainframe side. Um, Rocket's been doing a good job, but there's, there's a lot of companies that I, I don't think quite are there yet. And that's a challenge because if you don't have that, it's hard for these projects to get adopted. But it's also an opportunity as we're able to sort of go in there and help and help cultivate that and build off of the shoulders of giants that are already doing it. So, uh, yeah, I, it seems like every single one of my predictions is is connected to an opportunity or I'm sorry, one I challenge to connect to opportunity. But um, it, it's sort of how I see a lot of this laying out there. There's a lot ahead of us, but it, it creates opportunities as we go forward. Can you also talk about what is going to be the focus of the foundation, the project in 2024? Yeah, so the biggest focus is um, getting this mainframe on board. Um, we are a little bit behind of where we wanted to be. We hit a lot of roadblocks um, and just bumps along the road to get us there. We're moving really, really fast. Um, we're getting a lot closer. So we're expecting that to be our number one focus. That's the number one focus our governing board has, our technical communities have, is getting that mainframe resource online. I think secondarily, it's going to be how do we better educate the mainframe world on open source? You are seeing that as, as, as I kind of talked about in the opportunities and challenges, that's I think where we're seeing a lot of the friction starting to happen. You know, our projects are getting more mature, they're getting more feature complete, they're getting to a place where they're adding a lot of value, but they're sort of hitting that ceiling of uh, uncomfortability with open source within the organizations. So that is going to be another huge area of focus for us. Um, and I would say sort of a third, and, and we've done a really, really good job of this, and, and I expect this to more, is, is pulling out and telling the story of the mainframer today. Um, it's, it's not a uh, 
you know, not to be, um, you know, direct here. It's not a, a white dude in his 60s um, out there banging away at a keyboard. It's people of all ages, all races, all colors, all backgrounds, um, all over that are doing that. And I think we've been doing a really good job of telling that story. And a focus is going to be continuing that because I think it is lowering that. It's taking away those misconceptions and it's making this industry as one that's more approachable by others. John, thank you so much for taking time out today and share your predictions with us. And as usual, we'd love to have you back on the show next year, not only to see how many of these two predictions turn out to be true, but also to get the set of next predictions for next year. Thank you so much and uh, have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.